Control Y. All right, all right, all right. How's everyone doing? Oh my gosh, it is Saturday. I uh, October twenty eighth, two thousand and seventeen. New time. Uh, I I took two Saturdays off. I'm giving it some time to see if the YouTube channel is receiving content. It is stating receiving your content, which is a good thing. I want to make sure everything is up and running. All right, I just want to make sure. Okay, we are live. It is receiving content. Awesome. Okay, so welcome back, guys, or finally back. Awesome. I took two Saturdays off. I needed to take a break. I was injured. I was injured right here. Bicycle accident. Car hit me, but I'm okay. I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm willing to work hard for you guys again. So uh, we are in episode 27. Uh, I'm going to switch scenes for you guys right here. Look at it right there. Look at that beautiful Lenovo X3500 M5 server. I did an unboxing for you guys a while back. And uh, because of the two days that I had off resting and, you know, doing some R&R &R and whatever, um, I had some time to play around with the server. And today we are going to be installing only, just installing, uh, Prox Mox VE 5.1. 5.0 5 was the version that I was trying to push out to you guys, but I think... A couple of days ago, I went back inside the site and they had a new version. So that's the one that we are going to be pushing out today. Okay. So uh, the way that we're going to be installing it is we're going to be using a flash drive. This flash drive is what I'm going to be burning the ISO. And this brand new, right, hasn't even been opened. This is the one that we are going to be using to install the operating system. Boot from that on the server and then take advantage of all the hard drives. Now, this particular server has four hard drives. Uh, I forgot what size. I think 256 gigs solid state drive. I already did the RAID configuration for you guys. So uh, let's just get started. Now, the first thing that I want to do is let's switch over and let's go over some announcements before we even get into the, the show. And uh, all right. So first announcement is the, the title for the server room is going to change. I abbreviated the server room to TSR. At the end of it, it's not going to say episode blah. It's going to have everything as a hash 028, right? And uh, next week is going to be configuring Proxmox VE 5.1 server. And we are basically going to, you know, build the infrastructure. We're going to build an active directory. We're going to import an ISO, um, turn it on, install the operating system, do all that stuff within that environment. This environment is super new to me. I am so used to using Hyper-V. Um, I am so used to using uh, Citrix and VMware. So this is something that someone, you know, told me about. I mean, I think three or four times I've seen it in comments. And I said to myself, let me just do something for you guys with this. And I had the server. I had the hardware. Not, you know, take advantage of it. I finally upgraded my SCCM virtual machine. Holy moly, right? Finally upgraded that machine. So hopefully in the future when we're doing shows or when I'm doing videos for you guys, I'm gonna I'm going to be pushing out content with the latest version of SCCM, right? Uh, changing the live stream title, which is the hashtag stuff I already went over, and I open up a forum. I want to know some of your thoughts on this one. This is something that you guys could uh, uh, apply to. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, just drop them in there. If you have any you know, any crappy issues like me. I've been having a lot of issues with Windows 10 1709 with my gaming machine. Um, it was pushed down twice and it just completely crapped out my machine. I mean, completely crapped out my machine. It's really bad. So if you have any thoughts about it, let me know. Negative, positive, just shoot it at the comment section. Well, in the chat section, yeah. Or come back later on once the video is up and running and just... Give me your feedback. I definitely want to know what you guys think about that. And last but not least, the time change. Uh, I'm changing the server room uh, to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the reason that I'm doing this is because uh, 3 p.m. was to me is too late. 
and I'd rather be home spending some time with my son and just having some fun and playing League of Legends and doing some other stuff. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love you guys and spending time with you guys every Saturday is great, but you know, ugh, Jesus, three o'clock and then leaving out the lab around six to seven o'clock because I have to break everything down. It's, it's a pain in the butt. Okay, so before I continue with the PowerPoints, you know, I love PowerPoint, I'm going to start the process of building this USB, this USB that I have right here. I'm going to insert it inside the machine. I'm going to insert it inside the machine. Boom. And I'm going to do, if everything works well, I should get a nice little dialogue, you know, a dialogue box saying, hey, you got a new flash drive. So let's give it, there it goes. There it goes. Ah, it needs to format. And the reason why it needs to format is because I used it in the past. So let's go inside computer. This is the D. That's okay. That's the, the USB that I inserted. But the program that I'm going to be using to burn this ISO, which I already downloaded the ISO, and I like to use Rufus. It's a well-known utility that allows you to burn ISOs to flash drives. It works well. They're constantly upgrading it. So that's the reason why I like using it. And I already downloaded the Proxmox VE 5.1. If you're wondering how to get that, super simple. Just go to Google, type in Prox. I'm hopefully I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Hit enter, search it, and right there, just go into the site and just click. Now, you want to click on the download section and just download the ISO install, and then you're good to go. Okay, it is free, but you, they kind of push. It kind of push you to get a subscription because it kind of if you don't know what you're doing it's you know to me it's not really a well-known uh hypervisor uh so if you don't know what you're doing on this you might have to get a subscription so you get tech support 24 7 but you know I, I like to just go in there and play uh i think the the most that i've spent time with this is about two or three hours within a virtual environment i did a nested virtual environment but i haven't done it within a physical server so hopefully everything goes out well and if anyone is tuned in knows about it um you know give me some information i'm always willing to learn all right guys so let's go inside double click on rufus 2.17 is the latest hopefully is the latest one if not it's going to prompt me to get the latest one so i'm gonna zoom in for you guys so you guys can take a look and i'm going to mount that iso that's on a desktop that guy right there and we're going to click open now i did test out some information when it came down to this so let me okay it's ready awesome okay it's using that beautiful we are going to use the default, which is this guy right here. We're just going to use the default. Uh, okay. And you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it as PVE because that's the default one. And click on start. Uh, you're using it as a police. Okay. So I have to change that to that. Click on start. Okay. Yes. So I, I do remember this. <laughs> okay. So you have to pick up, uh, you have to pick the partition scheme of MBR for BIOS or you, uh, Unify, okay? Now you're gonna get this right here. If you're using Rufus, you could probably use whatever utility. There's a bunch of utilities out there, but I just like using Rufus for some reason. I'm, and again, I'm, I, might kill, I might be killing the name, but they give you a warning. And I know when I was testing it out, cause I do, again, I spent about two or three hours testing this stuff out. When I picked the recommended, it did not want to boot to the USB. So when I picked the DD image mode, everything was working smooth. <laughs> so I'm going to pick this, click OK. And yep, it's going to say it's going to destroy everything on the D drive. That's what we want. We're going to click OK. And again, multiple partitions, whatever. Click OK. It's going to wipe it clean, do its thing. So while that's happening, uh, let's zoom out. Let's go to the PowerPoint. Okay, because within the PowerPoint, I want to show you guys or give you a brief history of what's going on. What type of machine are we using today? And that's the Lenovo System X35 M5. And a big thank you, a big, big thank you for Lenovo for hooking us up with the X35 M5 to the X3500 M5 to play around with, uh, you know, during the show. And it's not a self-promotion or anything. It's just I'm very happy and uh, very fortunate that Lenovo hooks us up with servers. I would love to have other companies hook us up with other servers, but you know, I'm not that lucky. So uh, key features on the server is dual socket, 
tower server. All right, I'm gonna show you guys real quick because this is a beautiful tower. Awesome, beautiful. And uh, okay, so because it's a dual socket, it has 18 cores, up to 18 cores, and up to 45 megabytes L3 cache. That consists of 36 cores and 72 threads to maximize the concurrent ex execution of multi-threaded applications. Meaning you got two processors and a total of 36 cores, 18 each, just running nonstop hardcore. This is a hardcore tower for virtualization. Okay, it does have Intel Turbo Boost technology, which works excellent when you're dealing with virtualization. It does have hyper threading technology and it also has Intel VT virtualization technology. This is the VT stuff is very important, especially if you're deploying like a VMware uh, infrastructure to the server. You need that enabled within the BIOS. Uh, another, more key features uh, for memory up to 20, 2133 megahertz uh, memory speed uh, with two DIMMs per channel. Uh, you could get up to 1.5 terabytes of memory capacity. Holy moly. That's I know there's other servers that kind of beat that capacity, but it's not that bad. 1.5 terabytes. Uh, and I don't have 1.5 terabytes. I think I only have maybe 32 gigs, which, you know, we can make it work for the show, right? And also supports up to two NVIDIA Quadro graphics processing units. Now, I would love to have a Quadro graphics processor unit for a server, but these guys run off around three to five grand holy moly i would i would love to have one of those guys that would have been awesome but we don't so okay uh the server offers kill chip or chip kill also memory mirroring and memory rank so it has a lot of good stuff happening uh also has hot uh hot swap drives that supports raid redundancy uh, the RAID system that I have is a RAID 5. I'm going to show you guys a clip of me messing around within the BIOS setting and configuring the RAID. I didn't want to do the RAID stuff with you guys during the show because, you know, it takes a while for it to optimize itself and I didn't want to waste time. Okay. And it also has the ability to swap power supplies uh, and also uh, swap fans. So during the, during, the, during the PowerPoint, there's a couple of pictures that I took. And I kind of show you where the fans are at. And as always, I always recommend when you get a server, have two power supplies. I've I've had the worst case scenario. I started a job and they had a couple of servers with one power supply. What happens? The damn server sh goes down. Why it goes down? Because the power supply went down. Because we had a huge power surge and it just fried the power supply. What? And we, we didn't have a backup. So that sucks. So make sure when you purchase the server, always have two pack you know two power supplies you know i think some servers come with four i think four two four three i don't know all right more of key features it has the built-in imm 2.1 to monitor your system that's the integrated management module uh this is the same concept as uh drac drake drac the, the version that dell has i think one of you guys pointed this out to me in one of the comments because you're you know you have lenovo servers and i appreciate giving me some details on that so i actually tested this out and this is pretty cool uh you know it's unify built in duh. also has uh tpm which is enabled uh the tpm is 2.0 and it's supported with the unify 2.21 or later uh standard specifications the processor up to two intel Xeon processors, E5 2600 V3 CPUs with 18 cores. Uh, this is the clock speed, 2.8. 16 cores, this is the clock speed, 14 cores. So depending on what core setup that you get configured when you're purchasing it, it's going to it's gonna change the clock, um, the, the max speed of the processor. Uh, the chipset is an Intel C612. Memory, again, up to 24 dim slots, uh, dim sockets, 12 for each processor. So you got two processors, so it's 24, 24, 48. Wait, wait, sorry. So yeah, 12 for each processor. So each processor gets 12 memory, so it's 24 in total. You can either get R dims and LR dims are supported, but you cannot mix them. That's a no-no, don't mix them. You can either install R dims and just fill all your slots with R dims. If you start with R LR dims, Go for it. I know, I believe the LR DIMMs are the most expensive memory sticks ever. Eesh. That's why a lot of people go with the R DIMMs. Now, the max memory, again, like I told you, is 
1.5 terabytes, but depending on what module you get, RDIMS or LRDIMS, uh, with RDIMS is go it only goes up to 768 gigabytes. Now that's 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 the that's the sucky part. Now if you do our LR dims, you get one, you get that 1.5 terabyte, and that just basically means you gotta spend more of this. So hopefully you budget correctly with your IT budget to get what you need. Um, normally you sit down with your IT manager or your team and make sure that you're getting everything that you need. You gotta think, you gotta think maybe four or five years along, because you don't want to buy a a server that's the minimum specifications, and then all of a sudden, you know five years already passed and then you need to get a new machine because you didn't spec it out right you just so budget correctly when you're getting servers uh disk drive base there's a crap load of configurations uh you can get up to up to 32 2.5 inch uh sas or sata drives 12 so it really depends on what the way that you set it up like right now i only have four solid state drives now the maximum internal storage is 122.9 terabytes. Ugh, that's a lot. Uh, 120 terabytes with 12, 10 terabyte, 3.5 inch. Cool. So again, it's it's it really depends on your setup. Right? It's in the budget. Now one thing about the internal storage is you could intermix between SAS and SATA, which is supported. Okay. Uh, storage controller, it has an onboard uh, 6 gigabit SAS, uh, SATA, no RAID supported. Uh, and then you got the optional to get the RAID controller with the M1215 or the M5210. This will allow you to configure your RAID system. Okay. And the RAID system that we did was RAID 5. I did a RAID 5 because there's only four hard drives, right? I wish I had more hard drives. That's okay, Lenovo. Thank you for hooking us up with something. Especially with solid state drives. I'm super happy about that. Uh, again, you're able to upgrade to the RAID 6 or 60 if it is available for the M5210. Uh, this is for non-RAID. This is the N2215 the HBA. Uh, PCI expansion slots. Now, there's a crap load of expansion slots. I think, yeah, seven of them. And uh, there's a mixture between 16 speed and 8 speed. And out of the out of the mix, I think three, I believe three and seven or six are the ones that support the Quadro, uh, the Quadro uh, graphics card. Now, slot three and six support double wide. Yep, yep, there you go. Three and six is right there in front of my face. What's going on, Bernardo? Uh, yeah, three and six are the ones that support the double wide GPUs. Okay, so three and six is right here. This is the sixteen speed and sixteen speed right here. It's cool. Now, the ports, it has a crap load of ports. I'm just going to go over some of this stuff real quick. There you go. Sorry. So, the front port has two USBs. Right here in the front port, you guys can see. Got the two USBs right here. And the back, which, you know, I, hope, I wish I had a cameraman because the cameraman would be, like, navigating itself and showing you guys live stuff. But, you know, I do apologize for that. It's a one-man show. Um <laughs> So in the rear, uh, you have four USB ports. You got two 2.0, and then you got two 3.0. You have one DB15 video, and you have one RJ45 system management and four RJ45 gigabit network ports. Uh, and also you have an optional serial port. Uh, I think this model that we have have serial port. And then in internal, we have two internal USB 3.0 port, uh, ports for embedded hypervisor and an internal tape drives. This is optional. This is pretty cool. There's a picture that I could show you guys. Uh, there's like a, a nice little slot inside the motherboard that you can that they have like a um, like a SD card, and the SD card has like the the VMware software. So it's pretty cool. It's awesome. Now the power supply, it, again, up to two redundant hop swaps: 550 watt, 750 watt, 900 watts, and 15 watt. So depending, you know, it really depends on how you're configuring this stuff. And this is how it looks with the lid open. With this lid right here is open. And um, so you can see this guy comes with a DVD-ROM. This is the power button right here. This little slab right here gives you the information like the serial number, the two USBs. And this guy is only configured to accept uh, SAS drives. So I got one, two, three, four. It would have been awesome if they gave us four more, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> 
And um, yeah, so this is the back side. So these are the two power supplies. These are 750 watt power supplies. You have the the IMM the IMM port right here, and you have the four additional um, gigabits. And then you have the two uh, the two 3.0 USB ports and the two the 2.0 USB ports. And this is your VGA. And these are your PCIe slots. Again, it's a mixture between 16 and 8 speed. And the key right here is to unlock the front. Cool. And this is the inside. I love the inside. I love the way that it's designed. I know it's kind of geeky of me, but I just love the way that the inside with the little plastic thing is cool. And this is the controller. This is where the CD-ROM is located. And these are the hot swap fans. And these are the two processors. Look at that heat sink. Beautiful. Awesome. These are the dim slots right here for the memory. I got one memory here and I got an additional one over here. And it, I don't know. I think I do a close up over here. This is a, like more back. This is like the controller. Yeah, that's the controller right there. The heat sinks. Yeah, they got these nice, these little black tab things that cover up this stuff. You know, I, we already have the second CPU, but if I had some PCIe um, cards, I could definitely take advantage and just take that stuff out and insert what I need to insert. That's the back panel of it. These little guys right here unlocks this. So you just pull this to the side and this goes up and then you're able to take the metal uh, grate, you know, the metal uh, holders and then slap in that graphics card. And this is the back of the, the fans, the hot swappable fans. It's uh, the dim slots. And this is the memory. I think this the memory is two sticks, 16 gigs, which is cool. This is the CMOS battery. And this is the panel instructions and all that stuff. Cool. And this is the latch. The latch, you have to push it down to unlock it. And this is the uh, this is the top part. <laughs> this guy is super he heavy. I could tell you guys right now, like, holy crap. It was, it was really hard for me to manage, especially with my bad hand. But I was able to do it. And this is the front with the with the thing covered all right so network adapters it comes with a it re, again it really depends how you configure it but it comes with a broadcom uh, pcm 5715 chip uh four gigabit ethernet ports you could do uh, nick teaming uh these are some of the features with the ethernet i'm not going to go over all of them i do like the fact that it has automatic mdi crossover which is cool io virtualization features which is cool another great thing for vmware Cool, cool, cool. And for Hyper-V. And uh, I'm just going over it real quick because you know, I don't want to waste time. I want to get into it. I know probably the USB is already done. So I could probably plug it in and we could boot into it. Now, uh, these are some of the GPU adapters that the M3500 M5 from Lenovo supports. Look at that. Now, if you look these guys up, these guys are going to cost you an arm, a leg, and your, your car and whatever they're very expensive i would love to have one of these guys to the lab so i could test stuff out for you guys but damn these things are too expensive and you probably say so you're probably saying to yourself how you know do it like a monthly plan and pay it off by the time you finish paying it off there's something better and new that comes out so it's not really worth it <laughs> all right so this is one of the cool things that i like uh, the server supports vmware uh, vSphere hypervisor on one or two SD cards with an optional SD media adapter for the system X. I love this. This is awesome. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have that with this system, but it's okay. And this is all the supported operating system that Lenovo on their site kind of tells you that they support. Um, I don't know if Proxmox VE 5.1 will be supported, but hey, that's why we're here, right? Just testing it out. So that's the PowerPoint. The presentation is completos, and this is done. Awesome. Let's zoom in. I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm clicking on that, and I'm going to eject the flash drive the correct way. <laughs> I know a lot of people, even users, they just they just unplug it and just unplug it, right? All right, so I'm going to switch the scenes for you guys. There you go. You guys see my hand. Awesome. I'm going to plug in the flash drive. I'm going to plug in the flash drive on the front panel and uh, bring me. Awesome. I'm going to open this guy up. I'm going to open it up. Show you guys that I'm opening it up. Oh. 
fresh, new, brand new flash drive, never open. I'm going to take my headphones and I'm going to run to the back because I want to insert this guy on the back USBs. So I'm going to switch scenes for you guys. All right, so I switched everything. It looks like everything is good. Uh, let's go back to the main. And within the main, I'm going to go inside the boot manager. And I need to change something. So I'm going to go to change boot order. And okay, so right now my change boot order says USB storage, legacy only, Pixie network. I want to do the USB storage one. So everything is good there. So before we even start that, I want to show you guys a couple of things because um, I did configure it. So this is me configuring the RAID system. So when you start the machine, it takes a while for it to start the machine. Uh, you have to press F1. Once you press F1, it's going to load up over here. Uh, you need to get into, I believe, the storage. Yeah, you have to get into the configuration and find the storage one. And you pick your controller. Once you pick your controller, what I did, I did the, the easy route. They already give you a profile because you have a controller already inserted within the server. You're able to pick predefined profiles. So they had a RAID 1, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 10. So I just picked the, the default one, which was the RAID 5. And it just did it for me. It was really quick, easy, right? So that's just the rundown. And then I was double checking on all the other stuff so I'm just showing you what I did making sure everything is done I clear the I clear the configuration I picked the raid 5 once I picked the raid 5 I was just double checking the virtual disk right now the total size is going to give us 667 uh, closely to 700 gigs with the raid 5 which is not that bad and right here I'm just confirming the operation it's giving me a warning that all the data is going to be uh, deleted permanently <laughs> just confirm it once you confirm it, uh, sit back, relax. The configuration is pretty easy because it's, you know, solid, it's solid state drive. So the read and write is extremely fast. Plus, there's nothing in it. So, you know, it's easy. So I just wanted to show you that, that, you know, there's no magic behind. I just recorded everything. I didn't want to do everything with you guys live. So let's switch it off. And everything looks like it's okay. So I'm going to escape. I'm going to hit escape again. I'm going to hit escape again. And right now it says, do you want to exit the setup utility? Yes, exit the setup utility or escape to return. You're going to hit yes or Y for yes. And it's going to reboot. I think if I hit F12, right now it's booting. It takes a while for it to boot. And uh, once it boots, there it goes. Boom. Booyah. Nice. So we have a couple of options and we have install proc mox ve. We got the debug mode. We have rescue boot and we have the test memory. So what we are going to do is install prox mox ve. I'm hoping I'm hoping I'm not killing that name. Uh, I'm going to hit enter on that. It's loading the installer. It's initializing the RAM disk. Oh, I love this. I love this gibberish stuff because it just brings me back when you're dealing with like Linux servers and you reboot them. And I mean the Linux servers that you're, use, you're just basically using, using command prompt. All right. So, all right, my mouse is working. Uh, you got the public license. Agree to it. Take some time if you want to read it, but I'm just going to agree. There you go. Agree. All right. So target got the target. So right now, I know you guys can't see real clear, and I do apologize for that. Let me see if I can zoom in for you guys. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. All right. Let's 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 see if I can zoom in. All right. All right. All right. So I zoomed in a little bit. Hopefully, it's a little, a little better. All right. Cool. So right now, you're going to see the target hard disk. 
And by default, it's picking our RAID. So it says serve RAID M5210. That's the controller that we have. And the size that we have is six, uh, 667 gigabytes. So I'm going to hit the drop down menu. Hit the little drop down. Okay, cool. So this is where the challenge is at. Holy moly. Because I have... I have this I have the same flash drives. I have the same type of flash drive. This is gonna be a challenge. So let's click on this guy right here and let's click on option. Cause because both of my flash drives right now are the same type. And I don't know which is which. I don't know which is which. I know I gave it the name, but it's not reading the name. And my mouse is acting up, which is okay. All right. So this is how I'm going to play it. Let's play it this way. Okay, this is the hard drives. So S, S, D, B, S, D, B. Hmm. We got A, we got B, and we got C. I'm, I'm going to say C is the one in the back. Let's just take it. Let's just say stc is the one that we inserted in the back let's just go for it right right let's click on next on that uh country let's type in the country uh it's gonna be united states time zone let's pick our time zone let's find our time zone and where's my time zone? Oh, here it goes. America, New York, US, keyboard layouts, US, click next. And let's provide a password. All right, cool. So we provided a password. You could pick an email. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put an email. Awesome. And we are going to click next. Now, from my understanding, the way that you manage this server is by uh, web interface. So uh, we have to see. I have to remember which. I think I put it on two. Let me run in the back and see which port I insert it into. All right, so I did it on port two. This is port two. This is port, yeah, port two. And it's giving me a weird IP address. So I am going to, let's do this. Let's go inside my vSphere. And within my vSphere, I'm gonna go to my DHCP. And we're gonna give it an IP address. <laughs> All right, so let's give it an IP address. So let's go back over here and let's enter some stuff. All right. then just double checking some stuff make sure i'm doing everything right it's kind of weird that it did not pick up it didn't pick up my stuff hmm ip config all make sure all the settings are done correctly okay my dns is 100 All right, default gateway is set, 192.168.11. My DNS server is 192.168.1100, which is my Active Directory and all that good stuff. 
I'm going to make sure I write that down because we will be needing it soon. Awesome. Cool. All right. So I'm going to click on next. Host name does not look like a fully qualified. All right. Cool. We forgot to do that. So let's exit out of that. Awesome. Let's give it a name. So I gave it a I gave it a host name of pve.btnhd.edu. We are going to click next. And right now it is creating the partitions. Nice. Great. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. All right. So let's check a couple things out. All right, so right now it's creating the partition. I don't know how long that's going to take, but we're going to give it some time for it to uh, do its thing while we take a couple of things, take a closer look on things. All right. Oh, man, I don't know how long this is taking, especially we're doing it within a flash drive. Holy moly. Let me refresh this real quick. Hmm. cool all right don't know how that's gonna take that's gonna take a while but uh we're just gonna let it ride for a bit again if it i don't know how fast it's going to be okay right now it's creating the root file systems five percent we're gonna give it about five minutes i mean if it doesn't really move real fast i'm just gonna cut it short for this episode uh and then next week we're just gonna continue it but it looks like it's going a little fast i'm gonna show you guys right now see it's going pretty fast so hopefully we are able to get into the web interface so I can show you guys how it looks. And then we could just end it right there. But we have 10 strong individuals uh, tuned in. Thank you so much for the love and the appreciation. I, thank you so much. Uh, let's go inside the, the chat and uh, see what's up. All right. So we have uh, Lewis. Hello. We have Benjamin. Awesome. We have Dark Dude. Can you give me gaming PC as a gift? Oh. Sorry, dude. I don't. Even, I, I can't even give myself my own gaming PC. Uh, we have Michael. Hi, this is my first live I watch from your channel. Awesome. Welcome to the family. Thank you for joining live. And we have uh, X-Men 1996. The hypervisor is actually a KVM. This is true. It is a KVM type hypervisor. Uh, so I'm assuming you have some some expertise uh, 1996 if you do let me know at the bottom of the super chat i mean on the chat section all right so we're going pretty strong i'm gonna switch it back and it looks like we are 51 percent it's 51 percent right now is it is extracting the fonts font awesome they have a font called awesome <laughs> that's pretty cool and uh we're just gonna let that ride for a bit it's one of those things we, that we're just looking at stuff dry all right just doing a couple of things uh don't you hate when the number lock is not on? All right, still stuck. It's on, it's stuck on awesome, on the awesome font. Again, we're just gonna give it a few few minutes to see if it finalizes itself. I know that there's a good chance it might have to reboot itself, but if it reboots, that's great. It, it jumped up right now it's it's just pushing out of fonts and other things to it so all right so we're looking good again i'm gonna give it a few more minutes i know it's like it's basically just watching paint dry on the wall but it's it's just the process that we normally do every day in it right it, we it's just a, a waiting game but this is uh 
it's typical, you know. You do something, you walk away, and you just chillax. But if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them at the chat or the live chat. I would try to answer them for you guys. Um, all right, we have someone from Holland. Hello, how are you doing? How's the weather over there? Thank you for tuning in again. I appreciate all the love and the support, guys. Uh, we're going to give it five more minutes. It's 1.40 p.m. right now. Let's say at 1.45 if the paint has not dried, right? Uh, because right now we're just waiting until the paint dries. It is pushing out the operating system, as you guys can see. It is moving right now. Uh, the whole concept of this deployment is taking advantage of all four hard drives. I did a RAID 5 configuration on them, and I want to install the operating system on a flash drive, right? I want the system to boot into the flash drive within the operating system. That's what I want, and then take full advantage of the, whatchamacallit, um, darn, <laughs> I want to take full advantage of the storage of all four hard drives. I want to take advantage of that, you know, that I think it's 687 gigabytes. So it's still doing its thing. It's moving. It's just moving real slow. Right now it's 1:41 p.m. We can give it. We're going to give it four more minutes. Let's give it four more minutes, and uh, if nothing happens, then I, you know, I'm, I'm going to cut the sh show short, <laughs> and then we could just follow up next uh week <laughs> just saw my son my son is here with me today chilling helping me out it's my little partner in crime <laughs> it's cold over there i mean the weather over here in new york is in between it's cold and it's warm it's cold today it's it's nice it's not that cold and it's not that hot it's just nice weather uh, right now we're in 57 percent it's just driving me nuts like seriously we're just watching watching uh paint dry uh we are in 58 yeah we're in 58 percent right now three minutes we got three minutes until i end the show there you go but um yeah i'm just gonna let it ride if you guys do follow me on twitter uh, or Instagram, I will take a picture of the final results and share it out that way. But yeah, I'm just going to try to end it at 145 because I don't want to waste no one's time because this, this is driving me nuts. I can't stand this. I normally have, I normally doing something else. I go to the server room and check the network and do something else when this is done. But, uh, yeah, it looks like everything is going well. Uh, if you are tuning in, the process that we're doing right now is the following. We are, let me go in. Okay, so what we've done so far is we are taking advantage of the Lenovo X system, uh, wait, the Lenovo System X 3500 M5 server. All right, I did behind the scenes, I showed you guys a video that I did a configuration, a RAID 5 configuration on all four hard drives. I have four 256 gig solid state drives, I think 256 gig solid state drives. So I did a RAID 5 of them, a total of about 700 gigs. Awesome. Then what we did was I took uh, a flash drive, I inserted it inside my host machine, and I used Rufus, right, to uh, burn the ISO within the USB drive to make it bootable so I could boot inside the ISO and install what we're doing right now, which is this. We're installing it, right? Um, then I inserted another flash drive. I opened it up live with you guys. It's no tricks. Inserted at the back of the server. And we picked that to install the operating system into. So the whole concept is I want to boot into that flash drive and take advantage of all of the hard drives, all solid state drives, right? Operating system right now is going to be running within the flash drive. Okay. We're only going to be doing the installation part of today, and hopefully uh, next week we're we're going to log into the GUI, or the web GUI interface, log in, and once we log in, we're going to be importing some of our ISO stuff. We're going to build our file system and all that good stuff. I, again, this is all new to me, so if anyone knows about this new hypervisor, tune in. Make sure you tune in. Let me know because I would definitely love to get some feedback from you guys.
Well, okay, so that's a good question. Uh, is the IT is the IT the server or the software? It's not the server. I think because I plug I, I okay, so I plugged in the USB flash drive within a 2.0 USB port. Okay, so you got to understand the speed 2.0 USB port. It's really slow. It's it's the flash drive. If it's a flash drive for one, I inserted it inside a 2.0 USB port. So it's going to be a little slow. It's a little sluggish. So right now it is on 64%. It is 145 right now. Uh, I don't want you guys to hang around looking at paint dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it run. Right. Let's let this guy run. If you do follow me and if you follow me at Twitter or on my Instagram, uh, I will shoot out a picture of the final results of everything working. Well, something just happened. Looks like something is happening. Something is happening. Oh, wait, it just blacked out on me. <laughs> It just blacked out on me, but right now it's on 65%. It's just it's just taking a sweet time. Again, if you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, I would take a picture of the final results uh, because it's just taking a sweet time. Uh, thank you for so much for joining today. Again, the new time is going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hopefully, you guys uh, enjoyed this episode. Uh, I'm back. Hopefully, I'm back strong. Uh, two Saturdays, I took off just to rest. And next week is going to be episode 28. We're going to continue what we're doing here. Uh, we're going to do Im import some ISOs, like some Windows ISOs, some Linux stuff, and start building our infrastructure and everything within this hypervisor because this is super new to me. And I love learning things. I love learning new things. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Make sure you hit that big thumb button. Hit that like button. Share the video, share some love, whatever, whatever. If you do know this type of hypervisor technology, I would love to hear from you. I would love to get some feedback, some pros, some cons, what to do, what not to do. You know, I'm here to learn as well. So uh, please do that. Uh, as always, guys, thank you so, so much for joining in. Uh, I'm going to go back to show you guys. It is still doing its thing. Right now it's in 67%. It is very slow <laughs> but i'm just gonna end it right here all right guys so thank you so much for joining for those individuals that tune in and i catch you guys on the next episode which is next week episode 28 we're gonna continue doing this and uh see you guys right bye all right so how you turn this off i almost forget how to turn this off hmm uh, let's see all right all right uh, where is the controller? Uh, I think I got it.